We're back. Leave out my sniff. Every leaf there is in the park. Oh, hi. I didn't know we had company. I decided to pay a surprise visit. I hope you don't mind. Oh, we're always glad to see you, Charlie. Oh, <laughs> not as glad as Levi, though. Sue and I try to control ourselves. <laughs> oh, Sue, I'd like you to meet Logan Taylor. Logan, this is Sue Thomas, the best the FBI has to offer. Nice to meet you, Logan. You too. Charlie's told me so much about you. Uh, Logan's dad was a D.C. cop and a buddy of mine, Ben Taylor. He was the detective who helped convict the hunter. Oh, the hunter was a rather famous serial killer back in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I sort of remember that. Well, you were a little young, but it was an extremely high-profile case back then. Ben was a hero when he put him away. What can I help you with? Daddy died six months ago from cancer. At the end, he was really sick. And one night, he started to say some things that really bothered me. He said he made some mistakes. I asked him what he meant, and he said he didn't think he was a very good cop. When I asked him why, he became so emotional that he could barely finish. And finally, he said, I think I convicted an innocent man. He said it was the hunter. I, I, I just thought it was the drugs or his condition. Then, this came in the mail the other day addressed to him. Jerome Scoggins wrote to my father from prison. Jerome Scoggins? That's the man been arrested for the hunter killings. You can't put this one on me. Do you believe me now? He included a newspaper article about a cabbie stabbed four days ago in the same manner used by the hunter serial killer. They, they reported it was a robbery gone bad, but I wonder if my father did arrest the wrong man. That's hysterical. <laughs> I'm innocent, mate, which is the story I suggest you stick with today. Hey, speaking of lawsuits. What's going on? We work with the Marx Brothers. I'm being deposed this morning. I'm being sued. A year ago, I was chasing a suspect. He went over a fence. And Jack, super agent that he is, followed him over in a single bound. Clearing the fence beautifully until gravity had its effect, at which point he landed in a woman's yard on the other side. You see, the problem was uh, the woman kept chickens and Jack <laughs> landed right on top of a prize rooster. Which emitted its final cockadoodle-doo. It didn't survive. And now the owner is suing me for damages. I see, but can't you apologize and buy her another rooster? Oh, believe me, I tried that. The uh, squash rooster in question is apparently a real ladies' man. The old rooster just hasn't been the same since he's been gone. Damages include the loss of the rooster, as well as the traumatic effect upon the owner and the chickens, causing depression, pain, and suffering. The other chickens have stopped laying eggs because of the emotional trauma caused by Jack's deplorable act. <laughs> Which is what this crazy lady said. Like I have time for some frivolous lawsuit. <laughs> well, frivolous to you, mate, but life-changing to those poor husbandless hens. Come on, I have something for you. Great, as long as there's no poultry involved. Have you ever heard of the hunter killing? They were in their early 80s. Yeah. Um, we covered that case in behavioral sciences when I was at the academy. Actually, I uh, researched the hunter in depth for extra credit. What do you want to know? The detective who cracked the case. Ben Taylor. Right. Uh, his daughter came to see me. Um, there have been two cab drivers murdered in the last couple of weeks. She believed it could be the same guy. Hmm. Is she also expecting a quarter under her pillow when she loses her wisdom teeth? Unless Jerome Scoggins, the man convicted of the crimes, has somehow managed to escape from his maximum security cell, I find that highly doubtful. She has reason to suspect they might have convicted the wrong person. And what would give her that idea? Her father. 
Really? Why don't you fill Miles in on what you know? I would love to stay and chat, but unfortunately, I have to see a woman about a chicken. Oh, uh, give her our sympathy. Not you two. <laughs> And never see the seven wonders That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes In 1979 and 1980, there were a series of seven murders in D.C., all of them cab drivers, all of them stabbed in the back. And after each of the killings, the murderer taunted the police, leaving notes and clues at the scenes, as well as writing letters both to the police and to a Post reporter. He swore he'd never be caught and signed all of his correspondence, The Hunter. I had no idea you were such a serial killer expert, mate. I must admit these cases intrigue me. Everybody's got to have a hobby. I've got an appointment to meet Jerome Scoggins in prison. You want to come? We know you wrote a letter to Ben Taylor. It's the first time anybody from the FBI ever showed up. You've written Ben before? Written to him, spoke to him. He came out to the prison about a year ago. Then he just up and disappeared like he got sucked off the face of the earth. Well, actually he kind of was. He died. His daughter just got this last letter you sent. I hope he wasn't tortured by the truth. Well, many people in your position would hope he would be tortured. For a long time, I would have. But God has a way of getting your attention when you live in an 11 by 12 cell. I'm not the same man I used to be. I always hoped Ben would come around, you know, especially after he came out to visit me. I guess my chances to get out of here died with him. Maybe not. So you still maintain you are innocent? I was only convicted of two of the murders. They had some eyewitness pick me out of a lineup for one of them. I went down on the other one because the jury believed I did the first. Eyewitness testimony's never wrong, you know. You didn't have an alibi. I had an alibi. I couldn't prove it. I was robbing a liquor store at the time. Why didn't they pick you out for the liquor store robbery? Nobody saw me. I was the wheel man. Ronnie went in the store. Ronnie never came forward? No. Go figure, huh? Guess he didn't want to go to prison. Well, do you know where we can find this, uh, Ronnie? You're the FBI. His name's Ronnie Sloan. Would you be willing to give us a DNA sample? I'd be willing to give you my left leg if it meant I could get out of here. Sarah, I need to do a little digging on a Ronnie Sloan. Well, actually, no, I have no idea where he might be. That's why I'm calling you. Hey, I want it to be a challenge for you. Do you think Jerome's telling the truth? Everybody in prison says they're innocent. Not one of them did it, and they all have alibis no one would listen to. If we can get DNA from the old Hunter evidence, and it doesn't match Jerome's DNA, we prove the wrong man's in jail. And if we can get DNA from the new crime scene, we can compare it against old Hunter DNA. If it's the same, we'll know the real Hunter is up to his old tricks. If not, it's a copycat. Lawrence, would you like to take a break? No, please. I just want to get this over. Of course. (laughs) 
If you can, please tell us what happened after Philip's death. Please note that the rooster's name is Philip. Philip had been such a great bird. When he was killed, all the other chickens went into shock. I'm not sure whether they witnessed the tragedy or they, they were just traumatized, thinking that maybe someone else would jump over the fence and crush them, too. Or they were just mourning. Poor Phil. But whatever the reason, they just stopped laying eggs. They became lethargic, listless, and despondent, suffering from an acute form of depression. Um, they have been barren ever since that terrible day, <laughs> thus causing me severe emotional and financial hardship. This is ridiculous. I'm from Wisconsin. There's no such thing as a depressed chicken. Come on! <laughs> oh, Patty, my poor thing. Is that chicken in a trance? What is this? Looks like a depressed chicken to me. Here's your cab. Any physical evidence found? Oh, there's all kinds of hairs, fingerprints. You name it, they might have found it. It is a cab after all. Mm. And some things I'm not sure you want to know. Sorry I asked. To the best of our limited abilities, we can't tell if anything's from the killer or from the last month's passengers. Of course, we're not blessed with the superior investigative instincts you guys have. Oh, that's sweet. You're only saying it because it's true. Are you looking for anything in particular? The hunter used to put an X on the visor through the cabbie's picture. Got your information on Ronnie Sloan. That was fast. Yes, it was. It's why we love you so. <laughs> yeah, anyway. He had a rap sheet from 20 years ago. When I ran his fingerprints, he popped back up as Ron Randall, who applied for a passport a year ago with the same thumbprint. It's amazing how two different people can have the same thumb. <laughs> Do we have an address for Mr. Randall slash Sloan? And that's not all. There was another cabbie killing a little over a month ago. I've been going over old police reports. My gut tells me it may just be the same guy. Lucy. Find anything? Yeah, yeah. Is that right here? I found it online at the old Farmer's Almanac. My grandmother used to read that. Three ways to hypnotize a chicken. Only three. May I have that? There's the uh, oscillating finger method. The sternum stroke method. My personal favorite. And of course, the ever popular chalk line method. All right, enough. <laughs> I didn't know why. You can hypnotize a chicken? I'm not sure why you'd want to. Oh, you'd want to if you needed it to look depressed. The chicken lady, Beatrice Lawrence, she's suing me for $50,000. 50000 Did I read that right? Right as rain. Well, the chicken woman is definitely crying foul. That would be F-O-W-L. She brought a chicken. Patty, who was allegedly so traumatized by Philip, the rooster's death, that she stopped laying eggs. Has she stopped laying eggs? I don't know, Tara. She didn't lay one in the deposition. The interest of the chicken. Well, as an FBI agent, you're covered by insurance, Jack. Let the Bureau of Lawyers handle it. Yeah. I am, but it's just so stupid. These kinds of lawsuits are a drain on the whole system. Sucking time, money, and energy down the drain. Somebody quick, call Bill O'Reilly. I don't know, maybe Hannity and Combs. I'd love to hear Alan Combs defend the uh, chicken side of this one. <laughs> FBI. To what do I owe this honor? We're here to talk about Jerome Scoggins. Jerome Scoggins.
God, can stop. Do we really need to play this game? No, it's just, it's been so long since I thought about him. He thinks about you quite a bit. He says you could have been his alibi. He claims he was robbing a liquor store with a Ronnie Sloan at the time a murder was committed that he was convicted for. Is that what he says? That's what he says, Mr. Sloan. Uh, Randall. If he's telling the truth, you can help an innocent man get out of jail. The statute of limitations on a 20-year-old liquor store robbery is long past. There is no way you could be convicted now. I have a career, a reputation, a family. I'm sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a meeting to attend. How can he let an innocent person sit in prison? You're assuming that Ronnie Sloan has a conscience. You also assume that Jerome Scoggins is innocent. Didn't you see his reaction? Ronnie Sloan was holding up a liquor store with Jerome when that cabbie was killed. Another cab driver has been killed. Up, ladies and gentlemen, this most recent cab driver murder has convinced everybody that it's a serial killer. As of now, it's an active case for us. Sue, why don't you and Miles bring everybody up to speed? The latest victim looks like he fought back. We're checking tissue samples um, found under his fingernails for DNA. We're also waiting for DNA results from the tissue sample taken from Jerome Scoggins. He's been sitting in prison for the last 20 years on a hunter conviction. So we don't think he killed this last cabbie, do we? Seems like it's a pretty tight alibi on this one. We've also asked uh, Metro PD for any evidence they may still have from the old Hunter cases. Now, since DNA testing wasn't available at the time, none of it has ever been tested. So if the old matches the new, then Jerome is innocent and the Hunter is back. Usually, serial killers don't retire. They keep going until they're caught. Or are arrested for something else, maybe. Which is why we're checking out who might have been arrested around the time the killing stopped in the 80s and has been released in the past six months to a year. I'll have a list soon. Well, obviously, there's still the possibility that it's a copycat. But if that's the case, it doesn't help Jerome Scoggins, even if he is telling the truth. Well, let's solve one mystery at a time. The DNA will speak, and we will listen. Might not be a bad idea to float a story in the paper about these murders with the idea that it is a copycat. I mean, look, if he is the real guy, he won't be able to stand somebody else stealing his thunder. It's worth a try. And I happen to have a contact at a local newspaper who I think would be, um, cooperative. Hmm. <laughs> That's great. I gotta go. Trouble just walked in. I'll call you right back. I certainly hope you're talking about Sue and Miles, Mr. Angela. Mm -hmm. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, Special Agent Manning. Sue, Miles? D'Angelo? I've got something you might find helpful. I, uh, called ahead. How efficient of you? The infamous Hunter corresponded with a reporter that worked for this paper. Abigail Wagner. Do you know her? Not personally, but she was a legend. Never met a story she didn't deliver. Unfortunately, she died last year. Any idea what happened to the letters? No. But I can try and find out. And my copycat article is just about ready to hit the presses. Very good, Miss D'Angelo. Very efficient. Ah! This country has lost all semblance of common sense. The lawsuit? That was our insurance guy. He says Beatrice is willing to drop the whole thing for $10,000. I'd forget my own name for $10,000. He wants to settle. What? The FBI's insurance company would rather settle than run the risk of losing the case and having to pay the full $50,000 plus legal fees. Henry says that if I don't settle, I'm on my own. And I assume any risk of a decision above the settlement price. Mm, sounds dangerous. Okay, then. So much for any old hunter evidence. I just got off with Metro Police. They put all the old hunter evidence in storage and it was destroyed in a warehouse fire four years ago. Uh -uh. Are we sure that the fire was an accident? That's what they said, but who knows? Bobby, Darcy called. She couldn't get you on your cell. The hunter letters were sold by Abigail Wagner's nephew. To a museum? What kind of a museum would pay good money for letters written by a killer? You know, I'd really like to help you out, but uh, 
I paid a lot of money for these letters. <laughs> you know, it's one of the things that helped my museum take off. Isn't that special? Who knew there was such a thing as a serial killer museum? You know, I'm always looking for stuff written by or worn by or touched by, uh, well, you know, serial killers. Mr. Davies, we can do this the hard way, where you make us go get a subpoena, or you can just let us borrow the letters, and that way everybody's happy. Well, what do I get out of it? Our hearty thanks. Okay, listen. If I let you borrow these, you gotta promise to take care of them, huh? Hey, I'm serious. These things are one of a kind. I won't let them out of my sight. You guys must get some pretty cool stuff down at the Bureau, huh? I was thinking if you could hold on to some of it for me. I I'm sure you have no need of it once the case is done, right? Um, a murder weapon or a ransom note. <sighs> Maybe we could work out some kind of a deal. I'll add you to my Rolodex. Oh, old insurance form. This is a map of Washington, D.C., and it's got points marked on it with dates. These are the locations of the first seven hunter murders. What are those lines? I'm not sure. Maybe he was looking at the distance between each crime scene. This looks like a letter from Jerome Scoggins, only it's dated 1989. Daddy must have been troubled by this for a long time. Logan? These are for you. These are mine. <laughs> These are all the letters that I... I sent to him from camp, from vacation, and from college. <laughs> he kept my pictures. I had no idea. I didn't think he noticed things like this. We didn't talk much. He was tough, you know? Kept things inside. I know he saw things on the job that he didn't want to scare me about. But I had no idea he even cared about things like this. That's the way men were taught to be back then. We didn't talk about feelings with our families, let alone to each other. If I had it to do over, I could have done a lot more to help Ben. You didn't know anything was wrong any more than I did. I didn't know the specifics, but the last few years, I think I knew something was on his mind. But we never did talk about it. Someone who read the Hunter article wants to meet with me. I thought you might want to be there. Miss D'Angelo, I'm the one who called. I'm Tim Tennant. This is Special Agent Manning. He's with the FBI. There you go. Nice to meet you. Yep. Come this way. So, uh, Mr. Tennant, was there uh, something about Miss D'Angelo's article that uh, grabbed your attention? Actually, there was. I think my father might be the hunter. Can we get you a glass of water? Remember, Mr. Tennant, the article didn't say that the hunter is still out there. We talked about the possibility of a copycat killer, or that these murders could be totally unrelated. I know. That's what I'm hoping. But I got a bad feeling when I read the article. Something happened a long time ago when I was a little boy that I haven't thought about in years. I put
pushed it away, suppressed the memory. My dad was a violent guy. He used to hit my mother. My parents got divorced when I was seven, so I spent weekends with them sometimes. I was always scared, but that was the arrangement. I thought he'd gotten better. Then once, I remember he told me to tell people that we were home one night watching TV together when we weren't. He told me never to tell anybody anything else, even if they asked. But he wasn't with you? He'd gone out. I don't know how long he was gone, but after a while, I heard someone come in and go down to the basement. I was scared to death, but I snuck down to see who it was. Reading the newspaper article made it come back to me. He was washing up, washing away the blood. And then he saw me. I'll never forget that look in his eyes. He told me that the car had broken down and he cut himself trying to fix it, but I knew that wasn't true. He threatened that if I ever told anyone, it would be very bad for me. The next day, there were police all around the neighborhood because a guy who lived just down the street from us had been killed. He was a cab driver. He was one of the hunter's victims. Kenneth Tennant bounced around from job to job more than a daily temp and has anger management issues. I can't understand why I haven't dated him yet. Have you got a tip? Yeah, I was just going to visit him. As soon as Bobby gets off the telephone. Okay. Uh, sorry. That was the uh, Animal Planet. They wanted an exclusive on the Chicken Little case. They love the whole sky is falling angle. You know, especially since it turned out to be an FBI agent who's actually um, falling. But not to worry, mate. I told them that I'd talk to you, but that I couldn't promise anything. Thank you, Shecky. Let me know where you're appearing next. <laughs> Want to take a ride with me? Sure, where are we going? To enlist the services of our favorite undercover agent. Hopefully get this chicken off my back. Hey, 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 how you doing, huh? Hey, hey you look like a couple who enjoys music, am I right? You wouldn't be interested in the pair of awesome speakers for your sound system, would you? Still in the carton. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't they be? All right, straight from the factory. That's okay, I'll hold your pair, all right? If you decide you're interested, just ask around for Howie. Uh, how he finds. How he finds him, you buy him. Everybody knows me. Everybody who's anybody. Jackie! D! Fancy running into you here, huh? What is it? An assignment? Oh, this is gonna be great! We'll be working together again, just like old times, one for all, and I got you back. So, so, so tell me, come on, what's the gig? Was uh, forgery, fraud, or terrorism? Chickens? You guys want me to watch chickens? You know, I could take this as an insult if I weren't absolutely secure with who I am. That's okay. Take it as an insult. Okay, okay. You see a chicken lay an egg, you take a picture of the egg. All right, simple. Hey, do I get a badge? No. No. All right, okay. You don't have to be so snappy about it. I'll do it, but only to help you guys out. Now you owe me, huh? Next time I want something more substantial. And I want you to consider the badge. Or not. You know, that's the problem with the world today. Everybody is so tense. Hey, hey. What? Oh. Morning, Luz. Anybody talk to Kenneth Tennant yet? No, he's not home, but we can't find him. We're gonna try again this evening. Right. It's getting interesting, boys and girls. The lab just got the DNA results back from the old Hunter letters. <sighs> All six letters were definitely from the same guy. Did we compare them with Jerome DNA? Yes, we did. And the results are irrefutable. They don't match. Jerome Zinnison. I'm sure he didn't do it. Now we have to check the letters against Kenneth Tennant's DNA. One problem. Right. Each of the letters was sent after a different murder. Six of them. But there were seven Hunter murders. Yeah, the fifth murder never got a letter. That's the one Jerome, Jerome was, was convicted, convicted of. of. mean they're gonna let me go? Not yet. But you said the DNA didn't match mine. 
Well, that's proof, right? Almost. Your first conviction was for a murder that didn't receive a letter. So no DNA. That means we can't prove you didn't do that one. I didn't kill anybody. I believe you're drawn. We just have to prove it. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a chicken. Oh, come on, ladies, how about a little action? I cannot believe I'm out here waiting for a bunch of dumb birds to lay eggs. Oh, come on, file, not now. How oh, the mighty have fallen. These are my favorite bears. Yeah, Jack. We, we gotta have a word here, all right? I mean, what does my life come to, huh? huh? H haven't I done enough for you? I'll meet you there. All right. Hey, how are, you, how are the hens doing? The hens are fine. It's me that's dying here. Look, you're gonna be getting a cleaning invoice, Jackie. You mean they're laying? No, they're not. They've gone on break. I don't think I can wait till they get back, all right? Howie, this is very important to me. I'm counting on you. Well, I, I think I can live with failure, Jack, all right? I'm secure enough to live with failure in this mission here, okay? I'm out of here. Wait, wait, wait. Is there a fox in the hen house? Ho, 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 hold on, Jack. I, I believe we may have liftoff. Eureka! Beautiful! Hey, hey, not even crushing a rooster can stop nature, Jack. Sorry, girls, I'm out of here. Jay! Jerome is still in prison, and I don't know what to do to get him out. Well, look on the bright side. He probably hasn't had this many visitors in years. <coughs> Kidding. We got the results of the DNA found under the fingernails of the latest cabbie victim. It matches the DNA from the 1980 letters. The hunter is alive and well. And killing in our city again. Could it be Tim Tennant was right? Is his dad? Put SOG in Kenneth Tennant's house around the clock. Let's get him in here and find out. The hunter. All those years he's been out there. And we have a chance to put him away. Kenneth, it would be so much easier for you if you tell us what happened. But it's okay if you don't. The DNA sample we took from you can do your talking for you. What does that mean? We have DNA linked to murders from 20 years ago. We have reason to believe you may have been involved. Is that sweat on his brow? I think he must be getting hot in there. The hunter becomes the hunted. If you don't tell us what happened, we can't help you, Kenneth. And uh, we kind of put a rush on that DNA test. Let me help you. Tell me what happened. Every time there was a knock at the door, a car followed me more than a block, I thought somebody was onto me. I've been waiting 20 years for this town. You have any idea what that's like? It's okay, Kenneth. Now you can clear your mind. You'll feel better. I just got... I just got so mad. I couldn't control it. I couldn't find a job. My wife left me. They had an affair. They thought nobody knew about it. I knew. He poisoned her mind against me. And I knew. I knew I could get away with it. I thought he deserves it. And I know he didn't. Who deserved it? Fennel. Tom Fennel, number five. 
What about the others? I didn't do any others. That's how I knew I could get away with it. Kenneth's DNA doesn't match any of the letters. What he told us is right. You didn't kill us a copycat. Number five wasn't the hunter. That's why there was no letter for the fifth. Bobby. I just got this. You didn't catch me then. You won't catch me now. On the next full moon, I'll hunt again. Then say goodbye forever. You will never have another chance. The hunter. The next full moon is tomorrow night. D, check, check the cab companies. companies. Okay, we need to work the hotlines and follow up on as many tips as possible. Okay, I'll take care of that. Right, so what have we got? Why does a guy stop killing for 20 years and suddenly start back up again? Have we checked everyone who was put in jail 20 years ago who just got out? Surprisingly, it's not a long list. Expand the search to include other states, mental institutions, anything you can think of. What if he didn't stop? Well, I think we would have found more bodies. Not if it happened someplace else. Hey, look at this. It's a map of Madrid. And Ben Mark points on it just like he did for the hunter killing in Washington. The dots represent places where similar murders have taken place over the past 20 years. He didn't stop. He just became intercontinental. Madrid police had taken DNA from a suspect in the cabbie killing that they released for lack of evidence. I emailed the hunter's DNA markers to Madrid, and guess what? Bingo. Paris and Rome police confirmed clusters of similar killings, too. The location patterns on these two maps look similar. Can you, um, turn the Madrid map? That's good. Now the Washington map. A little more. Oh, hold it. What you got? Um, I'm not sure. With the old and new, there are ten murders up there. But we know Kenneth... Tenant committed the fifth one. Tara, can you uh, take off the fifth location? And the lines? Can you eliminate the map and just leave the locations? That's it. Orion, the, the hunter. hunter. Constellation. But there are only nine stars up here. Orion has ten. Can you put them together? Missing the last star at the top. Right there. Now put the map back up. That's where he'll kill his next victim. It's a quiet night. Don't see anything yet. Well, we're the only cabs in town, so to speak. Since we've pulled all the others out of this neighborhood. All we can do now is wait. It's Lucy. She says Stanfield Cab just got a call for a pickup about a block and a half from here at 11.30. Park your car to take a cab? More like park your car to kill a cabbie. Must be some new kind of ride sharing. Here he comes. Hey, you need a hand with that? I need to put it in your trunk. Yeah, I'll get that for you. This is it, Miles. Go, go, go! <laughs> Freeze! FBI, face down! Face down! Do it now! Your head down! Stay there! Don't move! Don't move! Because I will shoot! Face down! Alright, give me your hands. Don't move. Okay, come on. 
Thank you, mate. Thank you. Got that? Well, definitely a hunting knife. It's not what I expected. He doesn't look like a serial killer. They never do. That'd make it too easy. Look, I know none of this would have happened without your help. Thank you. It's not us you should thank. This is Logan Taylor, Ben Taylor's daughter. Sorry for your loss. Thank you. I'm sorry for yours. My father, Daddy, I, I, I know he wishes he were alive to see this day. If he were here, I know he'd want to tell you how sorry he was. And I want you to know he, he never gave up trying to find the truth. I'm thankful for that. I hope someday you can forgive him. I already have. If I hadn't, it would have eaten me up a long time ago. That doesn't prove anything. He could have put that egg there himself. Yeah, well, I submit to you that I did not. And I can prove it. We had the egg's DNA tested at the FBI lab, and I submit that these markers will match the DNA of one chicken in one said coop with the blue metal band around its leg. So, unless you want to go before a jury with this scientific evidence, why don't you just agree to allow me to buy you a new rooster? And I'll send each chicken a letter of condolence with my sincere apologies. <laughs> hey, Howie. You're a real hero. Oh. Thanks. Thanks. But, yeah, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have done it without my FBI training. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was beautiful. And, and that DNA, man, that stuff works like a charm, huh? I wonder what his DNA looks like. Oh, yeah, and then Jack throwing in the, the chicken condolence letter, a nice touch. I'm really starting to appreciate FBI humor. I'll tell you one thing I learned on this assignment, though. Now I know which came first, the chicken or the egg. I'm there for four hours with three chickens, no egg. Then, bingo, I got three chickens and an egg. You do the math. Here's a story for you. Oh, I see. A Pulitzer in my future. Where's my tape recorder when I need one? Much as I'm enjoying this, I actually have someplace real to be. Hi, when I see you, Apple. Oh, no, come on. I'm having fun. We're kicking it around after the big win, huh? Well, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. Oh, hey, 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 watch it. You're bruising the wing. Uh. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> I made a chicken joke. <laughs> bruising the wing. I got a million of them. Okay, okay. All right, why did the chicken blow its nose? Why? I'll tell you what? why. Uh, ow! Ow! Why well, give up? Why did the chicken blow its nose? Chickens don't have noses? Ah. Why? Ooh. Why did the chicken cross the basketball court? Because he heard the ref was calling fouls. I got one. Uh, why did the chicken run away? He heard Jack was dropping by. Oh. Oh. Okay. Bring Howie back here. I want him to hear that one. <laughs> That is the worst joke 